Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend where today uh, we are invested in sort of wiggling out of the corner here. I think we've done a pretty good job of expanding, growing powerful in terms of resource output and keeping up with the other players. Like our science, our science output is almost right up there <laughs> with everybody else. And I think we are on pace for a reasonable attempt at a science victory. However, obviously, None of that comes to fruition if I get devoured. So, here's what I'm thinking. I've been looking at the, the charts a little bit here. Uh, of course, we have this offer from Purple, who would love who would love to declare peace with us. Uh, if you look at military strength here, uh, Purple is at war with green, and I still haven't figured out what color this is. Uh, it's not lavender, right? Whatever, the, the Morgar color. Uh, <laughs> And obviously, that's not going too well for them. So they're, they're desperately casting about for allies. And the fact is, I do not think I want to be on this team's bad side. And they are, once again, uh, they are properly friends. So, I mean, what I'd really like to do is get ingratiated with the Morgar again, and then maybe try to turn my whole, my whole power block against pink, if we can. Because I think that that would be really beneficial for me. And it's probably not really outside of what the Morgar want to be doing already, right? We we know that Pink has land adjacent to uh, adjacent to Morgar land, and who doesn't want to steal all of the Urken, right? So, I think what, what I think I'm determining here is that we kind of need to do whatever it takes to get back in Blue's good graces, get back in the Morgar's good graces. So. We had been we had been trying to figure this out. It's interesting that first of all they don't have open pit mine, and secondly they consider it to be one of the best technologies that we could possibly give them. Is there anything that? No, nothing makes up anywhere near as much land as public granary. So we can totally make this happen. We're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of four four hundred and something low four hundreds influence. Uh, I really do think peace with them carries a lot of benefits. I think that has to be a thing we are we are thinking about. And then where are we at on this stuff? So like I, at this point, we definitely want to be here, and probably even up here would be cool. This is only twenty one hundred influence. That's probably pretty doable. We have 13 turns left. So if we refocus a city or two onto influence, we get ourselves a deal with the Morgar to, to sort of reestablish our position in the block. We have a mutual friend and everything. Once we are friendly with them, it should not, in theory, be too difficult to maintain that relationship. And if we give them a a favorable deal on the peace deal, we can probably, th that can probably hold us right there. Yeah, so we, we definitely have to refuse this. Cannot be making friends with their enemies. That's going to make things rough. We just have to like kind of overcome their anger about the thing that we did recently. And the fact that we're annoying other players probably will help a little bit. They like it when you, <laughs> they like it when you bother others. Uh, and then we gotta do something about this Kazar, right? We we have units that we're building. We have some units down here. We just have to present a force sufficient enough to make Pink move Kazar away. We don't actually have to win a fight. And then once that happens, obviously, the region is mine. So we'll keep an eye on what's going on down here. Where do we want to refocus? Sayap could afford to refocus. Obviously, we have to get that central market done but let's leave as few people over there as we can. Actually, it looks like, okay, it does have to be almost everybody, but once the central market's done, we can <laughs> bounce everyone over. Avarilia is currently invested in making us a lot of money, which is important. Build One definitely needs to be industry focused right now. You do not need it as much. Yeah, let's jump this city over to, over to industry, or uh, influence rather. 
these cities are, are doing what they need to be doing. You're food focused, which I think I'm fine with for the moment. Gleco's helping us make dust, which we do need. Yeah, let's stay on influence through the construction of the abbey here. Akime is new and is building hard on its basic resources. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think a lot of that's fine. Now, one of my major concerns is that this army will come over here and attack my main army because we are inside pink territory right now. So I'm going to try to... I guess there's no sense in keeping an eye out. If they run over here and attack us, then after we retreat, we jump in the ocean and sail to, sail to safety. I assume that's what that army is coming over here for. Just keeping an eye on them. I want to see what they're doing. They'll, they'll move any moment now. So we definitely have the influence to fire that deal. I don't know if that deal is the one, if that's the, the one that makes the most sense. Kind of looks like they're not going to do anything with this army. All right. So we can kind of keep an eye on it from a... Wait, did it move? No, okay. It's, it is right there. We just we lose the um, the flag over it. Uh, so what do I want next in the capital? Well, I'll tell you, what I kind of want to do is build burrows in such a way that we are leveling things up. Uh, the Abbey of Anomalies would be a lovely thing to build right now. We could put it over top of this and get ourselves some extra approval that way. Uh, obviously, a couple of pearls short of that, though. But what I can do is start building the district here that will make this level up a district when we place it. But for the moment, uh, an influence focus makes sense. You're not trying to, to disrupt me, which I guess I appreciate. We continue to research a pace and let's go make a deal. So they seem to value titanium quite a bit. We can, we can definitely afford to part with titanium enough to make this happen. Uh, let's see about their stuff. Can I get, what do I, I need three pearls? Can I get three pearls off of you? Wow, it's expensive. Now I don't want to give them all of my titanium, right? It is interesting, the way this looks, I think they value 10 titanium more than they value 10 mithrite right now. Like, I do want to give them a favorable deal, but I also would really like to have some resources left for my own buildings. Also, I'm not sure if this will count as a favorable deal. You know, you get that positive diplomatic modifier if you make a, a deal in their favor, but it has to be a certain amount past the bar, and I don't exactly know how much. Uh, what if I just gave you... I mean, if I gave you another technology instead of the titanium, we'd have to wait again. Maybe I just don't take pearls from them? Do we have any pearl deposits laying around that I have not picked up? There's one there. So we have a little bit of time before we would be making use of it, potentially. And the answer is not really. There's a couple of spots where we have one pearl left over. Hmm. All right, I'm just not gonna get the pearls from them. It's fine. Yeah, I wanna I wanna give them enough titanium that it makes a it makes this count as a deal in their favor, but also enough that I still have the titanium necessary to build. Like, that's gotta be good enough, right? And it also doesn't completely bankrupt us. All right, we make friend. Uh, then, you know what I would love is if we could do a map exchange. How how hard is that gonna be? Okay, probably, probably not is what I'm getting out of that. What about you, would you do maps? It's looking pretty rough. Uh, they're a little bit more flexible on the technology stuff, though. Like, I'd make this deal. Next turn. Okay. Yeah, need need maps. Need real information. 
and we are continuing to bank resources. So right now, my Empire approval level is barely happy. We have almost nothing running. It costs 55 of anything to run a booster. This would be a really good time to get a die booster going, actually. Is there a little bit of die on the market? Oh, there's a ton. Awesome. Awesome and great and excellent. Also a lot of red sang, which is cool. Also a lot of wine. Actually, enough wine. Although, obviously, that's going to be very expensive. But yeah, like we're in a situation where obviously 50% uh, influence. <laughs> Pretty significant. And then we're getting two spices per turn. Gosh, I love having access to the market. I love a game where there's no roving clan player constantly banning me from the market. All right, do we want to sell? Like, I don't have any Quicksilver incomes. This, that's just not even where my hand is supposed to be. There we go. No Quicksilver income, so I feel fine selling those. I have no Pixie Blood income. Okay, so get me 14 more spices. We'll pop that too. Then we can talk about wine at some point in the future, but yeah, food, food and influence plus a considerable amount each. Seems like a good idea. And continue to generate money and continue to generate influence. Okay. Yeah, interesting that they just have this... Um, this unit here doing nothing I don't even know what the value of defungifying this village is because they killed the other village and ruined our quest right like what how does this help me I guess it keeps it keeps some military units near Kazar so maybe maybe he will find this vaguely threatening a thing that would be very helpful to us uh, would be if Pink would get into a war with somebody that I didn't have to, like, pay for. A war that I didn't have to fund <laughs> would just be lovely. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go talk about some maps. I love a map. Can you show me the world? All right. A lot of, a lot of pink soldiers around here. Also, blue soldiers. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna come over and try to take Kazar. I bet. Sorry, who's doing a what now? Who dares? Nobody. Nobody is pillaging a thing. So somebody in here, I guess. Kapaku tamed. Uh, all right, stuff is stuff is happening. Maybe uh, maybe that'll compel Pink to move their uh, their Urkins around without ha me having to bother them. Okay, so green and red have gotten into a weird thing. Who's red? Red is Broken Lords. Okay. So green's got this much land. Yeah, there's Tuldraj right in the middle of right in the middle of Morgar territory. So you have the museum and just a lot of a lot of normal districts. Beyond that, you are currently building the um, the dust wonder as well. Interesting. Yeah, uh, the city must look very tough indeed for the Morgon not to have pounced on it by now. All right, so that happened. That happened. I'm being annoyed. Let's build some stuff. So I've really got this down, which means that a district here will give us a level up. Seems like an obvious play. Sumhin has completed. I think this was just we, we were just building all of the basics here, right? So obviously the central market has a lot of value. So we go ahead and work on that. Janeldas also needs to do something. We should definitely build the National Arena somewhere. I should, I should get that established. I don't know exactly where. Uh, you know, this place is big enough to benefit from a National Museum. 
will be another another six influence per turn. That's not nothing. And then we are one technology away from era five. So is it basic military technology? Probably, right? Like meritocratic promotion would be <laughs> would be a smart thing to have. Uh, we haven't really gotten any spell level ups either. We haven't been using spells. We haven't we haven't been doing a lot of fighting. Probably I should do more fighting. It's just like it feels very difficult to justify spending resources on fighting when you could spend your resources on uh, interesting things like like resources. What if I spent my resources to get resources? Well, somebody ought to report over here and make a thing happen, I suppose. And like I'm saying, I don't actually think that burning this down has a lot of value to us anymore. All right, so you get out of there. You know, we can also... Um, we can eject these three and have them head over as well. Will they get vision of whatever it is? It does seem like there are just like random lice armies around, which is annoying. Is that, is that what is happening here? Is this just some random lice that spawned? It sure is. Okay, well. That'll get me two city garrisons. Uh, we can use some spells to, to help us quell those if we don't think we'll be able to do so safely without. But obviously, like, every every bit of dust I spend on a spell is, is an amount that I'm not spending on resources, uh, which I have a strong feeling about. So... Most of our cities are pretty unhappy. Wine would be very good. Never mind. People people bought up all the wine. Not hugely surprising. Uh, wine is, as I was just noting, awfully good. Red Sang is also awfully good. It is worth noting. What are heroes right now? Heroes are like in the neighborhood of 1,200 except for this version of Karis, who I assume was just sold to the market and probably has, like, equipment and stuff. Yeah. Not very good equipment, though. Okay. And as soon as the AI saw that we bought a stockpile, they were like, ah, can't, can't let them have any more of those. That's fine. We'll build our own later. Uh, I do think we got tremendous value. Like, relative to the cost of purchasing points of industry by buying buildings, uh, you do very well buying stockpiles at, at full output. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully Blue will just run Kazar off so that we can go grab our thing here. And I'm going to remember to press this button so that, <laughs> so that we do not get completely destroyed because it is striking me that I am very outnumbered here in my home territory a lot of a lot of hostiles around I wonder if this army actually can help with this we just contribute some of our fortification damage to the removal of this thing Alright, they have finished being an annoyance on that particular building. They will annoy us more on other buildings in the near future. Look at that tile. Beautiful stuff. Uh, what are we trying to do now? Well, we don't have the resources for a lot of the things we might like to build. I mean, we can just district out. Probably worthwhile. A lot of things are happening right now while I'm sort of not paying attention. We encountered the Dragashi for the first time for some reason. Okay. A quest I was not really paying attention to has failed. They would like to open borders. The, this is still bad. I mean, no, obviously no. It's a terrible deal. That said, getting rid of closed borders does help a little bit with the, um, with the level of hostility. So I don't know where... Huh. I don't know where those lights got to. 
it's possible that they got fought. There are armies around here. Okay, 35 Quicksilver. We'll grab this and then reposition at that ruin to try to search it very quickly at the beginning of the turn before it can get stolen from us by the armies that are clearly angling to do that because it is about to be eclipse time. And, aha, the region has been declaimed. Do I just rush in and throw down on it? It's, that's going to reset the timer on this, I think, because we didn't finish it, and I don't have an army adjacent to it to finish it. But also, I really do want to grab this region before Pink decides to settle it again. And we can get there this turn. That is going to mean we're looking at a more expensive Empire plan. And it is going to harm us in some other ways, but... Yes, I want to get it now while we're sure we could get it. Hooray! Okay. So let's get some basics set up here. Uh, it will certainly help to get a mill foundry. It will certainly help. Actually, it will not help to get a sewer system, because we will, we will jump from the lowest level of content to the highest level of content. Winter is 1 to 17 turns from now. I'm going to go ahead and buy that out, too. Let's, let's get that done. And you can industry focus for a minute. Just try to get that, those basic buildings up real fast. Uh, oh, we do have to retrofit. And actually, Timok Rayan is not. He's wearing completely base gear. That's also, that's also very bad. Uh, we have a special bow that we can't afford to put on him. The thing is, right now, as we're angling for these governors and stuff, I kind of don't want to spend a huge amount of money on a hero like that. Yeah, let's let's hold off. So where are the temple ruins in this area that are not fungified? We can grab, go over here and grab something. You know what we should do, though, is we sh at the very least, we should equip him with the movement trinket. And then my design, my current design for the warlocks has the trinket, right? That's a lot of money, but it's also probably worth it, especially during the eclipse. Yeah, all right. All right, I suppose a relatively modern army is a good idea. All right, y'all are exactly where you need to be. Meritocratic promotion, two turns from putting us into the next era. Okay, let's make sure we get this ruin as quickly as possible. And it looks like there's a couple of decent confluxes around us as well. I'm going to have this army grab the movement conflux as soon as we can here. Alright, everything else can be figured out later. You are going to double back and grab that. And then do you see a conflux? Ooh! Hey, a source of pearls that I had missed. That I had just not realized was here. Oh, that's a diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, okay. Well, there is an unsearched ruin over there, but obviously we should probably focus. So this is not, yes, this is not overgrown. Head this way and then we'll move through this thing and we should probably just mer uh, merge these two forces up, but I want to make sure we're getting as many of these temple ruins as we can on the way there. So... I mean, there's more up here. I think that's probably the thing this army is doing. We're just gonna... It's more important to make sure we get these than it is to make sure we get these with the hero, I think. Because obviously the XP is nice, but the rewards are even nicer. Or at least potentially they are. 
Because, you know, this late in the game, you could get, like, a significant amount of Hyperium, or... It's not happening, but it could happen. We must keep our fingers crossed that it will. Okay, I mean, the dust rewards obviously are less exciting. They're relatively a lot less valuable. Like, in the early game, the amount of dust you can find, the maximum amount of dust you can find in a ruin, I think compares quite favorably to the maximum amount of strategics and stuff that you can find in a ruin. As the game goes on, that gets less and less true, both for quantity reasons and because an individual point of a strategic resource just goes way up in value. Like, a single Hyperium is much more valuable to you this late in the game than a point of titanium was early in the game. Alright, everybody's building, building's going well. Let's talk about potentially hiring some heroes. So... Uh, Edge of the Listener, not so exciting. Grand Cleric Akuma has Dust Boost 2, I guess. Jossam Murdap's alright, he's got Food Boost 1 and Dust Efficiency 3. Uh, and the Roving Clan tree is fine, right? Like, we have a couple of cities where Traveling Salesman's real good. Uh, and then Trade Route bonuses, more Trade Route bonuses, and then it leads very easily into Inspirational Leader and then Cold Operator. Uh, up here, you can use... If you put him in a city that's, like, on the border of your territory, you can make Trade Routes with people without having to be at peace with them, which is actually really powerful sometimes. Um... There is a Way Resigo, though. It's hard to pass up a Way Resigo. You know, y'all know how I feel about these Way Res. You're level three. How are your skill points? Oh, they're not distributed. Okay, so I'd be able to buy up a little bit right away. Yup. Let's do one of those. Uh, so, we want to put our new friend in a forested place. Does Janeldus. Okay, Janeldus not only already has a hero, but already has this hero. Uh, this is not a great place for a Weira, nor this. This city has some trees around it, but I think in the place where I settled, there are not trees. Yeah. I mean, the trees are not critical. This, you know what, Ahime has, has some trees, and it also could use a little bit of help. Because, like, this skill right here is the only thing where the trees actually matter. You know, all, the, all of the stuff beyond that is just flat industry boost, reduction on building costs, so... It's a pretty small concern, overall. And we will just keep building toward even more. So now that we have... Now that we have real friends, um, being able to trade across the ocean becomes pretty valuable. Uh, so going back and getting cargo docks and then bu building a cargo dock off of, like, uh, Build One, I guess. Because build, build One, yes, Build One is adjacent to the ocean already. And in fact, we could level that cargo dock up. Uh, Lais is also adjacent to the ocean in a place where a cargo dock could gain a level. So yeah, that'd, that'd be easy enough. We could, we could get a trade route going with, um, get some trade routes going with the larger friendly players and... You'd see a pretty significant boost. So, a technology to be looking out for in the very near future. Let's do try to keep an eye on the diplomatic situation. Okay, so pink has gone to war with green, but not interesting. So green's at war with purple and pink. Are the Morgar okay, the Morgar are still at war with purple. And the Vaulters are quietly staying out of it. They have an empire that's a little on the small side, honestly. Hmm. Under the, under the, um, the Dust Eclipse lighting conditions, it does get kind of hard to tell this blue from this other color. So we don't know a ton about Purple's territory. But it's not, it also looks like it's probably not large. Pink being at war with green doesn't seem like a real threat to green, honestly. 
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I I don't know if we can if we can insert ourselves into that conflict in a useful way. It is interesting though. All right, so let's talk about our empire plan. Now that we have now that we have the number of cities we probably will not grow beyond at any point during the game. So that would be 2310. And obviously this th I think this is like our new baseline. This is where we want to end up at at the very least. So are we going to make 2310? Uh, right now, yeah. Right now we will, but not by a huge amount. We don't have a ton of resources to play with. So I guess just keep at it. Obviously, we're continuing to build new influence buildings, and every time we level up a district, that's more influence as well. So, the penultimate era begins. Things are happening on the world map, and we may be in a position to take advantage. Somebody constructed the Throne of Emperors. Uh, the Vaulters have 50 of each strategic resource stored away, and so they get the, uh, the big dust improvement. Slowly but surely, my heroes level up. I would love I would love some winter immunity and then we can double back for the big science boosts. So unfortunately that does not, you know, we've we've revealed all the resources and everything at this point. We're not going to see any new uh, new big surprises. So, uh, one thing that I think is obviously pretty high value for us here is sacrificial amplifiers. Uh, also, there's another expansion disapproval reduction which will help our empire a lot. How much expansion disapproval are we eating right now? 75. Yeah. So a, a reduction in that is going to be enough to push some cities over the content to happy line. And some cities are, are riding real close to the fervent line. So yeah, that one's pretty high priority. Um, it's probably... How many turns do we have left on these pillars? I mean, it's, it's probably the pillar one, right? There are three turns left on these pillars. We get that done in five. That's that's probably the move. And then like we do want this very badly. Want that. Honestly, probably before this. We we gotta we gotta get our sea trade routes going. Okay. So some cities like Build One, which have been busy for a minute. Uh, would really benefit from having some advanced alchemy lab. Uh, Chanel Dust needs Palladian and Adamantine extractors. Managed to finally push the fungus off of all of the uh, deposits here, which is going to be very helpful. You know what? Actually, can you please put a rush on the glass steel? The city's very productive. I, I appreciate I appreciate the get it done attitude over here. Uh, Matanch has has built up some some good powerful stuff, and would really really benefit from a cargo dock like hugely. Let's um, let's maybe get this museum done. I think that would be very helpful. Yeah, go ahead and get that. There's not another ruin around here that is of particularly high import or anything. I guess there's that. Yeah, all right. Get, get in the water. Let's go over to the other landmass. It would make my life a lot easier if the pink player just disappeared from the map. I'll say that. So we just built this here. So now we have, we have kind of a weird shape in this city. Um, if we build a district here or here, it'll level that one up. Which, in you know, definitely inclines me to just do this thing. Because we could use the approval boost, obviously.
That said, we're also with this city in a place where Advanced Alchemy Lab is actually pretty solid. You know, leveling districts up does get you, it gets you some extra science and dust and influence. It gets you 15 approval, but keep in mind you are losing 10 approval by, by building a new district to cause the level up to occur. So it's not, it's not quite as good as it looks on, the, on its face. Um, or we just build this. Let's focus on this. Over here, I don't think we're in a big hurry to do the fungal exfoliation. I think it might just be more burrows. Where would we want to start building for the level up? I guess right here and here would be the, the sensible places. Yeah, and they can stay population focused for the moment. There's a lot of growing left to do there. Uh, you do not yet have your right of way. Yeah, <laughs> looking at these, I do believe I've got these exactly terribly wrong priorities there. Okay. That is a shame that we pretty much just got dust. Not perhaps a huge surprise, but I was I was really hoping to find a lucky cache of Hyperium. Now granted, with the dust, potentially we can buy Hyperium. Oh no wait, those are that's a Mycarin ruin. We'll come back to it. This one's also my Karen. How long would it take us to fix it? Ah, uh, six turns is too long. We will not get a, uh, a good ruin search out of it at six turns. That said, I don't know that there's anything else that's worth doing. We don't, we don't have another ruin to search. It's interesting that they just sailed out. Can they not do the relocate if they're not in friendly or neutral territory, maybe? He's not at war with the Morgar, so he wouldn't be going to attack a Morgar city. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they did that. Uh, so yeah, I guess I, I guess I'm just gonna slowly burn this down. In a lot of the other regions, we're gonna do the, the exfoliation from the city, but it doesn't really make any sense to do that in uh, Sayap, because this is the only thing here that is overgrown. And, you know, um, some technology to help us make alliances and stuff would also be well worth our while. So as Build One finishes this thing, we're going to have to start looking at uh, potentially buying some Hyperium so that we can... We can start building the other science stuff that we've missed out on. Right, I guess sail to here... One of the many Weiras has, uh, has leveled up. Great news for us. I'm still not interested in peace with you. Hey, look at that. The Mykera got their city to 800 fortification. Who would have guessed? Uh, influence generated by alliances has returned to normal, affecting us in no way. Precisely none ways. All right, so we got ourselves a level two district out of that. Probably want to go ahead and advance to Alchemy Lab here. Gotta get all of our base science values up. So at some point we do have to interrupt what we're doing and grab Imperial funding and we, we just have to find the, the re resources for that. Uh, we're gonna want Imperial News Network, obviously, very important. 
Um, probably really soon, actually. That's probably like a very high priority. God, we get so many very high priorities. So I think we're gonna let our we're gonna let our pillars lapse, and we're just gonna be lapsed for two turns while we wait for the the upgrade to finish researching. I believe that is the thing that makes sense. Although I don't know that buying any of these resources does. Do we want to get a hero? I mean, yes, I want to get a hero. It's gonna be a while before any of the uh, or before the market turns over, unless we buy one of the exclusive heroes, which will cause it to turn over immediately. I believe. And you know, Jessa Murdap's fine. Like I said, there will be places where where his the two skill points he has spent already will be perfectly valuable. Actually, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. So I think I think it's when an exclusive hero moves, it causes the market to refresh on the next turn. I fingers crossed that that's correct. <laughs> uh, so we have a couple of cities where we're just like built on top of a couple of anomalies right away. Where do we still need governance? Batanch, Sudraj, and Sen uh, Semhin. So it's these... Uh, no, it's not these two. It's... Ah, Matanch. Matanch has... Just the one anomaly, actually. It being on the edge of our empire is cool, but... It's not likely to be a huge difference if we can... You know, if we can keep peace, obviously. It won't matter too much that this is the edge of our, our stuff. And his food bonus probably does not optimally... It does not work as well as I would like there. Like, you want to put him in a place that needs the growth, right? So I think we probably do not want to grab the third point of traveling salesman. Let's just move up. So bonus trade routes or bonus ownership recovery rate. And at level two, zeroes out expansion disapproval. That's pretty cool. Um, this city's probably not going to be running any real trade routes anyway. So I guess we'll take this on the off chance that we do decide to take the second level of it. I think those are both pretty, um, pretty low value skill points, obviously. Okay, so hopefully next turn we can, we can land here and grab that ruin before the, uh, before the eclipse ends. And we just kind of, we're, we're slowing down a little bit. Five turns for research is not a thing I want to be seeing at this point in the game. But obviously, Sacrificial Amplifier will help us get through it. The fact that we were completely denied the science resource in the third group of resources hurt a lot. And we are just going to have to, we're going to have to smash our way through that at this point, I think. All right, cool stuff, good stuff. Eh, coolish. Okay, uh, build one. Plus 15 science per anomaly. Build one currently has one, two. We don't have this yet. That'll be three. This will be four. This city is currently benefiting from four anomalies, but it will never expand beyond four. Build one, uh, build one probably won't get beyond four either. And then this city also currently has four. A lot of, a lot of troops moving through my territory all of a sudden. So if we're gonna build the, um, if we're gonna go building our cryometrics lab, it makes more sense for it to be elsewhere. Uh, the large-scale aquatic center is still definitely, like, low value. I really don't want to refocus this city. So we need we need the influence pretty badly. It does, it does I think, make more sense to build this here. This city has a greater... Um, <clears throat> a greater base industry value, and I'm just gonna dig in on that. So the Vaulters are moving a lot of troops around all of a sudden. Still not at war with anybody that we know of, although we have not yet met Red. Red's whole, Red's whole deal could 
could be influencing that. I'm a little leery of trying to pay the Morgar into a war with Pink. The thing about that is, me buying the Morgar into a war with Pink would probably only work if I was willing to declare war on Pink myself. The AI usually will not go to war on your behalf unless you are participating. Uh, so that's obviously tricky for us for a number of reasons. What do I want you to be doing right now? That's not very good. You have river? It wouldn't even let us see this if we didn't have some river. Where are your river tiles? Huh. Weird. Um, is this the place where we want to build the national arena, actually? This city has some districts that are leveled up. Well, it has a district. <laughs> it has a district that is leveled up. But it has a national museum. It has a large number of districts relative to the rest of the empire, which obviously is a big deal. You know what? Uh, can I just can I just buy Ooh, wow. Titanium is not cheap right now. What in the hell? I guess that's why there was that premium for it in that trade deal. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and focus on that. Get that done. That'll help. Build one. Build one's good at that. Okay, we still have important important moves happening everywhere, and we're still well on track for our um, for our empire plan, with enough influence left over to maybe make a deal or two afterward. So, how does it look like stuff's going? We have a lot more vision over here now, which I which I take it to mean that green has been in further. Green, green has gained more vision. I might want to have um, this this little army run out and meet red. Honestly, ooh, wait a second, that's two that's two dots worth of pearls. That's three pearls over there. Okay, we're gonna search this ruin and then grab those pearls. Those would be nice to have. And then we might sail over and meet Red, because I think meeting Red is probably actually going to give us some valuable information. Now, being paused at this point in our Empire plan is a little bit of a bummer, because my suspicion is that... We're pretty close to the part of the Empire plan that, uh, or the, the part of the faction quest, rather. Man, nothing again, huh? I feel like we've had really bad luck with our post Endless Mechanisms ruin searching. Uh, I, I suspect we're close to the part of the Empire quest that upgrades your pillar levels again. Or the faction quest, rather. But, you know, there's just not very much we can do about it right now. Okay, so we're not re-enabling the pillars. We are probably banking money for a second here to make sure that we will be able to re-enable re the pillars when it makes, when the level has come. So, is it just time to start building out in ways such as to level up? Probably. What do I want? Access to the ocean? I mean, I guess I get access, like, we're gonna start building in one of these two spaces and then directly across, right? So we get access to the ocean either way. I guess this is a pretty bad build. Why aren't these... Oh, no. Okay, these inland waters... Oh, right. They're on the other side of the, the region border. That's why they don't pay out. Well, then that means we probably do, in fact, want to just build here and there. Although, what am I doing? If we're going to build in those two spaces, we build here first, obviously. And since you're kind of not, that's not a super high priority thing to do, why don't you generate us some money to help with the situation that we are currently working on? Green might be annoyed by this. They also might not know it happened. We are sort of sneaking up on it. 
That's my hope, is <laughs> that they will not be aware that we did this. I'm less concerned about them breaking up with us than I am about the Morgar, though. So we have to think a little bit carefully about the rest of our researches here, because once we hit the once we hit the next era, we really don't want to do anything except take endless stuff. So we want to make sure we have we we get everything. Okay, warnings, bad news. That means they want to downgrade our relationship, but they can't currently afford to. So they're they're working up to the uh, to the discount, which obviously I'm not a big fan of. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's kind of a terrible time for that. So 2310, okay, we have some influence, we have some influence. So I think what I probably wanna do is um, make a gift to them. I would really like to stay on the team, is the thing. Yeah, we're all feeling dismissive. Nobody's actively angry at me, but gosh, I'd like to stay on the team. So what if we do, okay, you hate the idea of open borders, you will never do that. If I just, boy. That's not a lot of value. It seems like they don't really want any of the stuff I have. Also, the Titan Bones have built up to a point where we can probably buy out the rest of a booster. Okay, I am just going to give them a gift and we're gonna see if that works. I hope that that works, because I could really, I could really use to stay friendly with them. If they decide they want to fight us, it makes my life so much harder. Okay, there's Titan Bones on the market and they're not even that expensive. Let's just go ahead and buy 12 of these. What? 10. Oh, right as I was saying that somebody bought the AI in this game is so spiteful. <laughs> All right, well, I guess never mind then. We will just wait and get it the old fashioned way. You would have a hard time at this point convincing me that they don't know exactly what they're doing. Cold blooded is what they are. We do need to, we do need to get the fungal exfoliation done here. Cause like, Bringing, bringing in the spices is pretty important. I guess we don't have... A lot of these ruins are available. We should probably actually search these before heading back to the mainland. And we have now enough pearls for a... Um, for another Abbey of Anomalies. I really think we want to make the next abbey here. Or then it, we, we want to make an abbey here for build one, but we can't do that until we get enough population to build a district on top of this. We could just abbey one of the um, anomalies up here that we're already on top of, but I don't, it doesn't get us as much new territory. And plus, it'll make this district relatively easy to level up, and we want to place this district anyway because it levels that one up, so I feel like there's a lot of value there. We definitely, definitely want to make that happen. Uh, remember this plan? The hero's not been leveling up very fast. Uh, they're getting closer and closer on the open borders thing. You know what? I accept. I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to be friendly. Trying to be friendly with this this pair of players. They do not make it easy. All right, burn this out, please. Uh, in Sharon, it would also be cool if we could do a burnout at this point. In 
Sayop, I think we just go ahead and, and put down the Abbey. Because this is a district level up that gains us an additional 20 approval. Um, has no, effectively has no cost. It, just, it, feel, it feels hugely worthwhile. And at this point, I think we can, we can de-emphasize influence a little bit. I still want to make sure some of the cities are influence heavy because we're going to have to, um, yeah, we're going to have to do a thing. All right, let's put down some science pillars, shall we? So where, where are we at with these now? Plus six on city tile, plus an additional three on winter. So we definitely want to do there. Here is pretty good. Uh, am I allowed to do the water? I am not. Well, that's all right. So this district is already completed, which means just placing one here is fine. Definitely have some spots over here where they're well uh, well used. This city is built really well for, for taking advantage of pillars. And then I am actually just going to go ahead and place so we can't afford anymore, so we can do one more. Uh, and that would be... I think we've gotten all of the places where we're sort of like built around in a curve. So at, at this point, we would just be placing in a spot where it's adjacent to two districts. Right, because yeah, that's, that's built out. Okay, and I don't think it matters too much. Well, you know what? This is just adjacent to two districts now, but this tile will also be grabbed soon, so. Yeah. Okay, that got our cargo dock research down to two turns. So that's 2,000 science right there. Obviously, a rate that's a little bit difficult to maintain. Probably not going to get to run another Moonly uh, booster, is my guess. I think those days are probably over, sadly. So we're still hunting for a couple of heroes. One, two, two. Ooh. Should I be trying to get this? Probably not. We probably, we probably at this point, settling post turn 100, we're probably gonna find that it is difficult to get the city into a place where it's providing enough value to be worth the um, the cost. Like even even these were awfully late. That said, I think they're they're both contributing reasonably. I I don't know. I don't know where the where the point is where it flips over from being positive value to negative value. So Matanch is finishing that, and we have a lot of important stuff building. Not this so much. <laughs> this is not that valuable. This city is mostly just kind of sitting here. Now sit here, sit here and produce Alchemy Lab at the very least. Okay. And we are burning out some uh, some fungal infections that will let us search some more ruins here, which is nice. Winter came on very quickly after the end of the eclipse. Probably not a huge surprise. So obviously now we have a lot of pearl uh, grabbing to do real fast here. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be real fast. We don't we don't know exactly how aware the AI players are of where the pearls spawn inside of our regions. Oh wait, stop. Never mind. I forgot. There's. Thing right here that we should probably search. Okay, 40 Palladian was a good find. Okay, minus 30% defense. They <laughs> they never fixed this typo, apparently. Uh, minus 30 defense on certain types of Canadian units, plus 30 defense on infantry units. Pretty good for us. The Vaulters have claimed Fakir. Okay. It doesn't tell me very much. I see that green is taking more territory off of red. So red and green are at war and green is winning. Good news for me.
The dye and the spices have both ended. Bad news. Bad news for me. And I'm assuming we're not going to be anywhere near running those again. Empire approval value has fallen to content. There is at least enough dye to purchase. Like, people are selling dye, which is helpful. We don't need to jump on it right now. I'm not going to worry about it too much for the moment. Uh, Janelle does probably... Probably does just build that next burrow, right? We have the ability to build cargo docks next turn, which is going to be a huge help. Why did I even click on that city? It's already doing the thing it needs to be doing. Uh, over here... We can just build kind like kind of a bad burrow over there, but it does at least level this up. Only gets us one extra tile, which is a shame. Uh, alternatively, we do have a couple tiles of lake. <laughs> so it's not nothing. Uh, and then like the dust depository, we do have this city just sitting here producing dust right now but like maybe we should this would help with that but also maybe the actual answer is we just shouldn't be doing that maybe I should pull those people over to science and we should focus up I really do want to get heroes for our last two cities though if I bump you over we're still plus 78 yeah, all right. So then it doesn't feel like this is a very good build, and I think we probably instead want to make this happen. Matanch has finished a valuable thing and cannot currently produce naval units, just in case anyone was curious. Um, unfortunately, the way this city is shaped along the coast here makes... And, like, through this little narrow bottleneck makes leveling up districts really weird. But we could build here and here. It'd be okay, I guess. Obviously, these are pretty low-value districts during the winter. We did it! Hooray! So let's go grab the largest deposits of pearls that we can see first, just to, just to be on the safe side here. Because I sure could use a couple more abbeys of anomalies. We, we definitely have multiple cities where I would still like to do that. Really, that's only two pearls, huh? The deposit looks, it looks a little bit larger. I think it's probably just because it's like floating over water. Like they probably, they probably have, the ones over water are probably slightly different art or something. All right, come back this way. I'm not gonna go out of my way for a single pearl. You know, this is hardly out of my way though. Okay, never mind. He did, he did complete the move. Okay, so we'll get that. That'll be enough to build two more abbeys, because, like, this city doesn't have one, right? Which is wild. This city has great anomalies. And then, um, yeah, we have... In Genodas, actually, it would be really cool to build one over the Earth Spine. That's, in fact, I, for some reason, kind of thought I already had. Well, let's go ahead and put that in the queue and move it ahead of the burrow. What am I doing over here? All right, so there's a lot of a lot of weird hostilities going on out in the world. Gosh, I hope the Morgar don't turn on us. So we do need to just keep checking in periodically. Okay, purple's still at war with both of you. Pink is still only at war with green. 
And green's doing very well. Green, it doesn't matter that pink is at war with green. It's having no effect on anything at all because pink's units are <laughs> extremely far away. I don't know what they're doing. You would think with all of the, the mobility of that army and stuff that they would be, I don't know, at the very least showing up in red's territory and, and participating in this stuff, but it is clear that they are not. So because of the ice shelf, I think our trade routes with pink are going to get, or with the, the, um, the Morgar are going to be a little weird during the winter. I guess actually, if I had, if I had roads running through Samhain, we'd probably have trade with them now, right? Can you run trade routes across the ice shelf? I guess it doesn't look like it's made roads, so probably not. Uh, still no. Okay, black spot not on me. Frankly, overjoyed. In fact, black spot on pink is really good news in terms of like clarifying intention. I think that's very, very good for us to see. Okay, so we very, very badly want to be able to build another district in this region. It would be hugely helpful if I had 12 population. While we're waiting for that to occur, Um, this is a pretty bad large-scale aquatic center for the moment. I do want the cargo dock, but it's not a super high priority. Uh, you lot can search me some ruins. Uh-oh, I'm being spied on. Governor in Laïs has been targeted. Which one of my thousands of cities? Okay, this one. So that could be that could be blue potentially. Uh, it is probably not critical that this city continue doing what it's doing at full effectiveness. So let's go ahead and run that roundup. Let's root the spy out. Uh, Hime is still a single district, so probably it is not museum time. Oh, you know what? You could build one of these. That would be a good idea. All right, so all that stuff's good. Yeah, wow. I really, I really do think we've seen way more than the expected value of uh, Empty Ruins post Endless Mechanisms. That's a real shame. The time when they are most valuable. Oh wait, what am I doing? Go get that. Yeah, and they were absolutely, they were absolutely headed for that. How dare you? In my territory. Okay, that was basically an abbey right there. <clears throat> so... You're going to move to here. We don't have anywhere that we need to run immediately. That's pretty small. Yeah, I think continuing to run toward this makes the most sense. And in theory, we only need one dock, right? You can run an infinite number of trade routes through a single dock to a single dock. The Morgar do have cargo docks, right? Yes, okay. I do, not, I do not have the ability to trade it to them. It would be wild for them not to, given how much their cities are dependent on... Yeah, okay, they have, they have docks out. Uh, given how much their cities are dependent on being coastal, it would be very strange for them never to have researched the really powerful coastal district, but you can never tell. Sometimes the AI does things that just seem, uh, they seem baffling to our puny human minds. So let's kick in our very fun and good empire plan here. That's a lot of that's a lot of fungus folk. 
What are y'all doing down here? Did I finally meet Red? Oh, no. They're mad about the fungal blooms. Yes, that's true. I have been murdering you. They want to give me four titanium in exchange for... Okay, hold on a second, you. I'm going to come back to that deal because my suspicion is that that deal's not as weird as it looks on its surface. I bet the trade value on those things is really screwed up right now. Yeah, there are only three titanium available on the market, and they're 126 dust each. So I get where they're coming from, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to... Right? I can't. That would be a very silly thing to do. Do I want to grab this just, just in case? Could I also do... You know what? You know what? Just in case. What would this have taken? Okay. Just an extra 3,000 or so influence. <laughs> Probably not really all that feasible. This is not... That could have happened. I don't really want to be using my dust in that way, though. I want to be using my dust for spells and or pillars. All right, so we'll commit that. Uh, you don't even have to go steal those pearls. It's fine. Let green have that one pearl. I guess just move to here, because that's all the movement you have left. Uh, so you searched that, and then I guess we're just back on the road. Man, we need, we need some proper roads up here. So this deal is going to be um, pretty significantly positive to them. The AI only offer you deals that are significantly positive to them. So I wonder if we should... No, there's no way, right? That's It's such a large quantity of resource that is potentially so valuable. Because I'm kind of thinking, like, if we're actually thinking about potentially preparing for war, this is where we want to pick up some of this stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't grab Marvelous Armor, but we would grab, like, Marvelous Alloys. And then we probably want to go back and get uh, the Tier 2... Uh, alchemical armor because it gives the plus science per citizen trinket which obviously we would love to have on some of our people gosh there's a lot of um, there's a lot of technologies to research that are still relevant honestly yeah okay I don't know I don't know what we're gonna do what we're gonna do here is is call the episode I know that so that's gonna be it for us for today thank you all so much for watching I think we're 100% still in this in terms of pacing. Maybe we're, we're a little on the slow side, but we're, we're not like out of, out of the game in terms of pacing. But I think a lot is going to come down to how the long-term diplomatic situation breaks and if we're able to keep the Morgar basically friendly. Um, and I don't know for sure that, the, that we will be. And if it turns out that we aren't able to do that, we need to figure out a way to fight them. We don't have to be able to like defeat them in a war and conquer their territories or anything. We just need to keep them out of our city squares for long enough to finish cobbling together the, the tech that we need. I don't know. I, I, I'm i feeling pretty tense about this. Uh, come back next time tomorrow to see if all that tension is justified. And we'll see you then.